Welcome aboard, uh, James. Welcome, Kevin. You well? Uh, very, very well. A uh, couple of, uh, obviously, uh, campaign stories we're going to talk about, but I think uh, we better get straight to what happened in Barnsley today. Uh, Nigel Farage, a second missile thrown at him. Obviously, last week in Clacton, somebody threw a banana milkshake at him. Uh, this time, uh, some thug picked up some what looked like wet concrete and hurled it uh, at Farage on the top of a bus. Now, uh, you can see what's going on here. There's a pattern building up. These things have a habit of catching fire. Someone does it, someone does it again, then it becomes a fashion. Uh, here we are in Barnsley. This, this is the footage of it. Uh, the guy who did it tried to run away. Uh, Farage ducked. There he goes. There's the guy doing it. Uh, look at that. Look at that. That's wet concrete. I mean, for all you know, there might be some hard bits of concrete in there as well. He tries to run away, but he ain't getting away. Now, what I'm saying, James, is this is important. This is uh, very worrying. Uh, if it becomes like the trend in this country to attack political uh, uh, candidates when they're on the campaign trail, we're in trouble. So I'm saying that from now on, we send the message, someone like that, you chuck a missile at a political candidate when he's on the campaign trail, appealing for the people's votes, you get five years. Otherwise, we'll never stop this. This will become some kind of funny fashion. Uh, and it won't be long before uh, the, the next missile is not a piece of wet concrete. It's not a banana milkshake. It's something altogether more dangerous. Yeah, I think it's terrible, Kevin. I mean, it's, you know, it's been instance in many elections, but it seems to be ratcheting up. You know, I'm all for freedom of speech and even the right to protest. I mean, that's part of our civil liberties. But there should be consequences, legal consequences and criminal action when it descends into violence. And I know there were certain people on social media were somehow laughing and justifying the milkshake incident. You can't justify that either. Because where does it stop? It starts with a milkshake and ends up, you know, escalating into something else. You know, it's we've got to get to a point in our political discourse whereby we can passionately disagree with those who have different opinions mm. and call out bad political decisions or statements of intent or bad government policy. That's all fair game. But resorting to violence, I completely agree with you, Kevin. Violence is violence. Yeah. And there should be consequences of that, criminal consequences. Yeah. And it's the second time it's happened to Farage. It's happened to various individuals in various campaigns over the years. I mean, if you want to go one stage further, I mean, look what happened with Joe Cox. You know, all it takes... David Ames, for God's sake. You know. Yes, exactly. I mean, all it takes... You know, this is one of the consequences, again, of social media, where it's kind of you know, the angry mob whips up sort of pylons against individuals. You can sort of justify that because it's only words, but sometimes those words end up having consequences into violent action. And I think if anyone does that, whether it's a milkshake or concrete or something even more damaging, there has to be the same consequences of criminal action. And, it, it, you know, we need to nip this in the bud because at some point there's going to be a tragedy if we're not careful. And while, you know, we all have different views and we like some politicians or dislike, actually we dislike more than we like at the moment, there is absolutely no need, there's no justification whatsoever for any form of act of violence. And it is an act of violence, even spilling a milkshake. That's not something that should be laughed at or joked at and say, you know, he got what he deserved. It's still the same principle. You know, and I feel sorry for the politicians. I actually watched an interview of Farage a few days ago where he looked genuinely moved and shaken by yeah. the first instant. Yeah. Anyone would. Yeah. Do, you know, would do, you know what, what, do you know what worries me, James, is, is this. So that girl, uh, an OnlyFans model, who in my view was clearly doing it for self-publicity, uh, you know, wrote... Um, uh, Nigel Farage is against everything that I stand for. And by the way, here's my OnlyFans website. Do take a look at yours for five quid kind of thing. Uh, but uh, she'll go to court. She's charged with, uh, I think it's like actual bodily harm or something like that. Uh, or assault by battery, that's it, which is the, the least of the assault charges. Uh, she'll go to court. She'll get a 50 quid fine. She'll get some sympathetic magistrates oh well i agree with you politically you know the, in just the same way that just stop oil protesters quite often get very lenient sentences because the ludicrous judges go well you're campaigning to save the world so it's okay if you break the law well it's not uh but uh, just stop oil they can carry on throwing paint at the uh, 
uh, King's Pitch portrait or whatever hell it is that they want to do as long as they don't pick on people. Now these maniacs are picking on people so the milkshake girl, what worries me is she'll get 50 quid and a tap on the wrist uh, this guy with the, uh, uh, the wet concrete, the same. Uh, the ju our judicial system, our legal system, ought to right now uh, be contemplating sending an extremely serious message. You attack a political candidate while they're campaigning for people's votes in a general election, you go to jail. No whiffs, no buts. And frankly, I'll give them five years. Don't talk to me about uh, the jails are full up. We have to send a message here. Otherwise, something bad is going to happen between now and July the 4th. You mark my words. Yeah, I completely agree, Kevin. I mean, as I said, the right to protest is something we should protect. You know, there's all kinds of great protests. I mean, I've seen recently been involved with the Welsh farmers and their magnificent protests in the farmers markets where over a thousand were there. They were having speeches. They were putting pressure on the Welsh government, and it was all done peacefully, including the tractor convoy. That's complete. That, that's a great part of democracy, where there's kind of activism. But that's very, very different to a, a repugnant form of militant activism, which descends into violence. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it should come with consequences, criminal consequences. But also, it, as I said earlier, it needs to be nipped in the bud because I think we're heading down a path where we're. We're posing a risk to our politicians. And while we might not agree with them, yeah. no one deserves that. Yeah. You know, imagine just walking down the street, anyone, and suddenly you get some concrete thrown out, you have milkshake thrown in your face. Yeah. Uh, You're not going to be best pleased with that, and you probably want some sort of criminal action against the individual, because it is a form of violence. Violence isn't just about, in terms of armed weapons and also physical violence and so on. It's also, it starts somewhere else. Yeah. And our politicians are going through a difficult time for them. I've got no sympathy for the majority of politicians. I think most of them are quite nefarious <laughs> in what they're doing. But but ultimately, they didn't, no one deserves that. I totally Farage agree. has his own view. Some people agree with him. Some people don't. Well, it's, but it, we get it, to the point... Yeah, it just feeds into... I totally agree, James. It feeds into the fact that this country seems to have lost its ability uh, to uh, stage... Uh, civilized debate. I, I blame the schools. Kids come out of school. If you don't agree with me, I hate you. you, know, if you uh, I don't agree with you. Oh, right. I'll call you names then. I'll insult you. you know, they have no ability to argue in a civilized way, to agree, uh, to disagree agreeably. And that's what this feeds into. Uh, so, yes. Uh, and I fear for Nigel Farage in particular because he's such a kind of divisive character. Uh, but uh, what we don't want, if we're not careful, you see, you, this is the way Britain does business. And that's good. Our politicians move among us. They go and meet the people. They have a drink with them in the pub. They say, vote for me. Let's have a chat. That's what we've always done. That's great. Uh, but if we get these idiots throwing missiles at candidates, that will all have to stop and we'll end up like America, where every political candidate goes around like they're Fort Knox, surrounded by armed guards. We don't want that. We want open democracy. So this is really important. We've got to do something about it. Uh, I'm going to go off piste a little bit, uh, James, uh, but uh, I want you to watch this and uh, see what you think. Uh, this is uh, Joe Biden. Biden, the president of America, the most powerful man on the face of the planet, uh, making a speech uh, yesterday. Let's have a listen. She knows, well, she knows so long as she was denied, our freedom can never be secured. Uh, that, well, that's it. Uh, I don't suppose you speak Biden. Uh, I don't speak Biden, but... Uh, that guy, can't, he's not even speaking English now. Now, we're going to cover the Hunter Biden story. He's been found guilty on all counts of buying a gun, uh, lying about being a drug addict at the time. But we're going to cover that later. But I'd, what I'd like your thoughts on, uh, 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 James, because I think it's a more pressing and important issue, is this guy, this guy who, can't, who, who now is garbling his English, can't even speak a proper sentence. We know he falls over all the time. There's other footage of him at this event looking extremely out of it, very odd and weird, uh, just sort of standing there like going like this, you know, not a really aware. This guy, I mean, we can't have him being the next president of the United States. It's just not acceptable. He's not all there, is he? Yeah, well, and also the Democrat supporters need to be honest about this as well. 
He just doesn't. This has been going on for quite some time. And it, actually, over the last four years, there's been a lot of this. And of course, if anyone points this out, they're accused of, sort of mocking him and so on. But there is a serious point here. The leader of the free world who cannot string a sentence together, can barely walk down steps. And we've all seen the clips. There was one last year where he was standing there and he said, what defines America? I'll tell you what defines America. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> actually... In, fa in fact, he didn't tell us what defined America, but he promised well, to. Yeah, that's typical of him, yeah. But it's, yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so much of this. And it's, you know, it's easy to mock... But ultimately, there's got to be some truth told here as well about his ability to lead America over the next four years. Yeah. You know, you can barely string a sentence together. The press conferences are clipped. There's, there's clips from wherever he is, sort of turning in the wrong direction, making everyone else uncomfortable, sometimes walking off the stage when he's not supposed to, something going completely off piece, talking about other things. His job... It's a somewhat irresponsible job and requires a lot, a, a lot of big decisions on a daily basis, including giving a lot of speeches and fronting up to the media. And he seems incapable of doing that. I mean, we've got the debate coming up against Trump. I mean, see what happens He's there. He's going to get annihilated in that. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing uh, that uh, we're going to be covering this story later on, but uh, apparently the Democrats are trying to throw all sorts of terms and conditions at Donald Trump, really difficult ones. And whatever they say, Trump's going, yeah, fine, whatever, whatever. Because Trump knows if he gets on stage with that old geezer in front of the cameras, he will annihilate him. Uh, and it will be uh, unpleasant to see. You know, you're right about this, James. You know, at first we used to laugh about old Biden falling over and all that. And there is still a, a kind of funny element to it. But it's gone beyond a joke. This man is standing to be, uh, for four more years, the president of the United States, the most powerful man on the face of the planet with his finger on the button. And he does not have his marbles. He's not at the races. His cognitive decline is dramatic. You can see this. And I cannot understand why the Democrats are letting this guy stand. It's such a disaster.